Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian, and I'm joined by the original author of Baby Got Back, Rich Stambolian. Uh, you know what? True story. I did write that song. I wrote that song. I wrote Funky Cole Medina. Uh, I wrote Wild Thing, the Tone Loke version. I even Man. wrote... Uh, <laughs> I wrote all were you, that, I wrote were, all you also, shit, were you also in Ace Ventura as a detective? I was Ace Ventura. I also wrote uh, Fantastic Voyage for Coolio, but I did not write Gangster's Paradise. How about the Fantastic Four? I love them. You love the Fantastic Four. I do love the Fantastic I Four. I went down a rabbit hole mm-hmm. uh, last night about the early Marvel MCU. That oh, cool. The, the only MCU that ever existed that had full crossover within every Marvel property that at the time it was being produced, mm-hmm. Spider-Man, the animated series. Yeah. They yeah, had full full ability to use any character from the marvel universe in that series Mm -hmm. uh because the animated shows had like these weird laws that weren't attached to studios you know so like sony if you're making a movie you know you got a politic like they like i feel like the the mcu is in the state it's in now because sony and marvel politicked each other into like my guys got to be in your movie and you guys got to be in my movie is that cool yeah I actually experienced uh, what it would be like to be in a Marvel MCU, but on the X-Men side. When okay. w- So I got the vaccine a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if I, we sure. spoke about it on the show. I got the, the, uh, the Pfizer vaccine at the Javits Center. So mil- military run, you know, lines. You also went to the Javits Center to get yours. And yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, your experience is very different than mine because your experience was like 20 minutes in and out. Mine mm-hmm. was the equivalence of the X, like all the mutants from the X Men universe, waiting in line to go to Genosha. Oh my god, <laughs> that's the that is the exact definition. So, do you remember in that episode, uh, in the in the animated series, right? They yeah. show all these people from like the X Men universe, but like they don't say who they are. It's like right? the Morlocks and like the all Morlocks, the, the, like yeah. all a uh, tons of Morlocks. Everybody was a Morlock, <laughs> uh, but they don't they don't say who it is because then they got to pay like licensing fees. So they were only allowed uh-huh. X amount. So they're kind of like crappily drawn versions mm-hmm. of them. That's exactly what this line was. A sea of purple, green hair, people with retractable arms were on that were online. There was like a grabbers? woman that. Like, like, yeah, no, like the arm, like, like scorpion. Somebody had a scorpion arm on that line. Oh, get somebody, out of here. somebody lifted her leg, got very upset, just shot, shot out lasers from her leg. I'm Are you sure you. you weren't online for like a Ramstein concert? No, it was CBGB actually. <laughs> no, it was a, it was a, it was a false memory of going to CBGBs. <laughs> I listen, like I, everybody, everybody who I know who, who got the vaccine at the Javits said it, they waited an inordinate amount of time. And I feel very lucky and spoiled because on Friday it was as if the universe said, this guy don't like waiting on the lines. And I was in and out, like literally walked in and out. It was like the time that you got sneezed on and you made it in and then just came right out. That was exactly yeah, we it. people. I don't think people remember that, but uh, <laughs> we went to Comic-Con one year and I and I don't like conventions. I don't like to be around people like that mm-hmm. those type of people you know <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Harsh no, i just i just don't want to i don't want to it, it, it's too much it's a lot of mutants okay. walking around right and, and nobody's yeah, yeah. on best behavior either they, everybody's no, no, no. everybody i agree with that and i'll tell you why because there's a mask right they're covered they're in cosplay mm-hmm. they're wearing some stupid shirt so i get in that i'm like mm-hmm. rich i swear to god if one of these effing mutants sneezes on me i'm out of here right literally word for word what i said and i was kind of mm-hmm. joking i get in this mamma jamma of a person <laughs> That's a good way to put comes it. <laughs> right in front of me, sneezes mm-hmm. all over me, like right yeah. in my face. I look at Rich and I look at Jonathan because Jonathan was doing the show at the time. I go, all right, guys, I'll see you at the bar. I got I ran out the door. There was a capsi, a capsi, a taxi. I hailed the taxi. I just got the pen and I went back home. That was it. I went to the bar. It was great. Can we call cabs capsies now? Capsies. <laughs> I, got the cab I want to use it as a as an insult. What are you, a cab C? What are you, a cab C? Uh, yeah, that I you bet you bent the story a little bit, but it's pretty much true. Like very you much true. on You walked right out, stuck your arm out, and a car came. I never saw anything like it in my life. A car came <laughs> and picked you up immediately. I got a text uh, half an hour later saying, "I'm on Bell. I'm at press. Uh, if you guys want to meet me here, I'll be here for the rest of the day." <laughs> that that person right now, if if it was today, that that sneeze on me, she'd be charged on federal charges. 
That's assault. It's biological warfare. That <laughs> you know never what? forget that's our a, face. That's another never good the, name for the. Uh, that's another good name for the odors and aromas at Comic Con. Biological warfare. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this show is all about professional wrestling. If this is the first time you're tuning in, listen. We like to have a lot of fun here. I'm Andrew Terry, and of course, of course, uh, Rich Stamboli. I'm doing the show for almost ten mm-hmm. years now. Yeah. Lifelong friends, twenty some odd year friendship, and. One day we're like, hey, let's just talk about pro wrestling. And here we are uh, on F4W on the Wrestling Observer website, on YouTube, on Twitch. We're everywhere you could find us. Everywhere podcasts are available. I always encourage you guys, go subscribe to our channel, Matt Men Podcast here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Of course, subscribe to F4W's YouTube account also. We have a lot to get to. Last week, we did not do a show. I had uh, the week from hell last week. I, I had a bunch of stuff I had to do in the city, so it was almost impossible to schedule something we were supposed to record yesterday but i got back from manhattan i spent the weekend in the city so uh we decided you know what monday morning good way to kick off the week there's a ton of news happening and i normally we run down the matches and the shows that we watch but i want to start off with the news uh and that's the breaking news that andrade has asked for his release so Mm -hmm. this is very interesting he has not been on tv for quite some time there was a bizarre subs- uh, suspension at one point of his yes. run. Uh, you know, as we know, he's engaged to Charlotte Flair. Um, unbelievable talent. He was they were really heating up to him until about Paul Heyman's departure as lead creative yeah. on the Raw side. And immediately you could see the effects of Paul Heyman leaving creative and all those the directions that they were going with Umberto, with him, uh, with who was it, Garza? Right, yeah, no, Angel Garza. They, Angel Garza. Who else were they pushing? Uh, it was uh, it, it was Angel Garza, Austin Theory, and Andrade. Right? They were no, like even, little... yeah, that that crew. But they also had like oh, Alistair Black was another one. They were starting to push yes. at the yeah. same time. He's and, he's done though, right, dude? I, I got I got, I I don't want to go into it, but it's not. Mm. There's a lot of issues right now. Fascinating. There's a ton of issues. Um, I've heard some rumors that I would. If it was a week ago, I would have probably brought it up on the show, but I want to I want to wait till Thursday to bring this okay. up because I need to sure. I, I need to follow up. I haven't followed up on a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of speculation here. The Andrade thing is interesting because um, I spoke to someone within WWE. Mm-hmm. They didn't deny. He just wasn't he hasn't he hadn't followed up on this, but they said, listen, we were told a lot of people said that, yeah, he's very unhappy, but also he likes to do this sometimes. And huh. If you see it go public on his side, mm-hmm. it could possibly be that he's working something. Interesting. Is you know? the is that screen cap you sent yesterday for real or was that photoshopped? Which screen cap was that? The one with him and Charlotte on the lounge chair. Oh no, that's a real photo. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh but No, nothing bad. Nothing bad. It was posted publicly. There's nothing bad. Nothing bad. Somebody else posted one that uh, a photo, the same one with a caption. I, the caption's not real. That's what I wanted to. Okay, no, no, right. no. That's I was gonna real. say that's a bold move. This no, guy. no, 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 no. That is Guys, not real. <laughs> that is not real. I don't even want to repeat because this is a you know this is a family friendly show. Brian Alvarez tells me keep this PG nine. PG nine. Keep this nine year nine year old level. He told us to oh, that we got it. We got to behave. We cannot. No, I'm joking. Um, I. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened with that guy because, man, you know what? What a good looking guy. Yeah. Great look, great look on him. Great hair. I always say that magic is a great body, great hair and great tan. And this guy completes it and a phenomenal worker. Um, you know what? I will give you my two cents on Andrade. Tell me. You ready? OK, so the I'm, I'm going to go in a little bit of a circle, but I feel like his and this is from my perspective. Okay. And the way WWE works, right? Perception. Andrade, as amazing as he is, I feel like they, if he gives them guff or trouble or whatever, they can say, listen, you know what? We're going to grant your, your release. We have Santos Escobar. And that guy is gold, right? Santos says, yeah, he is. But Andrade was gold, too, during his last run in NXT. Remember how great I he was? Think- I think it's the English speaking thing where like Santos Escobar, that guy's cutting better promos in English now, right? Yeah. Where I think if I think they wanted that for Andrade and they probably would have no qualms to say like, hey, listen, like we're going to cut you loose. 
on the other side of it, you know, like look what they did with uh, Mystico, right? Where he was Sin Cara. They were like, hey, we don't need you anymore, but we do like the costume. So we're going to put somebody else in the costume. See you later. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I, I think Andrade has more presence, in my opinion, than Santos Escobar. There's something, there's, uh, there's presence. Also, Andrade had a five-star match in NXT, according to MG yeah. Geek. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel like, I don't know if it's, if it's has anything to do with Charlotte. I mean, listen, you don't want to speculate here, but obviously he's right, unhappy right. with his position. And this guy uh, was promised the moon and he really didn't do much. And they, they, Zelina's gone, which was a big part of his act. Yeah. Um, you know, that, 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 that takes away from it. And they, they were saying that they were going to put Charlotte and him together at one point. And obviously mm -hmm. that's always the kiss of death because Charlotte will overshadow him. Yes. Same thing with Becky and Seth. We, we saw what happened with Becky and Seth and that did not work out well. Nobody was really wanted to see that because yeah, it was cringy because their, their, their characters, Seth is vile, you know, right, even when he's right. a baby face, he's still vile. You kind of like that in him. And right, Becky right, became, right. Becky became such a strong character on her own where you combined the two and it removed every piece of importance that they had. It was, I, I saw that as like, it, it it just made it just it perceptively it came off as Seth was a little bit emasculated in that whole thing that they did. Yeah. But so, that could just be the office breaking balls, you know, it could be that. Uh, listen, we, we've discussed, uh, you know, in detail, some of the stuff that's been told to us by writers, uh, especially from that that first Smackdown episode on, on Fox where Seth blew a gasket because mm -hmm. Becky's promo uh, was kind of overshadowed by the rock. You know, this is coming right, from a right. writer. Like, I, I'm not even, the, the, and, you know, s s same source that's told us a lot of stuff. Like, a lot of people, they don't want to deal with him because he's difficult. But the same goes for a lot of the women on the roster, too. Remember, she, he, he kind of broke down, mm. um, you know, why certain women have been able to be in a prominent position. And he perfectly said it's because of their, their willingness to argue and tell you that this is dumb and they're not doing it. Listen, you got a politic, right? Where, by the way, a lot of the guys don't do it as much, mm -hmm. you know, a and he, he, he was actually it was very interesting. He said that the women are way more vocal in the company when something is stupid. And he was agreeing with them, by the way. He wasn't saying it in like, like, ah, oh, they're 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 being annoying uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that the women are more willing to tell you straight to your face. I'm not doing that. That sounds really stupid. And it's going to hurt my character mm -hmm. while the men do it because they're afraid you know, the second they say no, something is going to happen. There's a there's a weird uh, mm. thing happening. And you can kind of see that because the women are being booked so much better. That is true. You got to and like uh, there's a comment in the chat room here that I kind of want to address, too. Yeah. Uh, John Gorman says it's unreal that Andrade, Aleister Black, Keith Lee and Ricochet won't be on WrestleMania. And they were the core of a white hot NXT at one point. Yeah. Great. Very well said, John. Um, it, well, listen, this, this goes back to the lack of focus that we talk about constantly, right? You have yeah. all the freaking talent in the world. How do you not have these guys in prominent positions? You know, they're getting into a very, and we'll, we'll talk about this because I think this is an important conversation to have, uh, but they're getting into like a little bit of a dangerous situation here with creative because they have all this talent that's mm -hmm. not being utilized in any possible way. They're doing they're doing a right. great job at focusing on one or two or three guys. But when you talk right. about the mid card, that's your bread and butter of creating the next level. They've abandoned it. It's kind of a mess. It, it is a mess. And it's listen, man, 40 some odd writers or 30 some, whatever the hell you want to say, plus uh, agents, plus mm -hmm. the old man, you know, it, everything gets twisted. You know, you got a guy like Ricochet, Keith Lee. You know what? I'm going to tell you something, and this is very unpopular. I get why they don't get Keith Lee. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not agreeing with them, but I understand why they have an issue with him because he is not the traditional big man. And mm. when you get that in their hands, like, listen, Vader, Bam Bam, not the traditional big man, right? They were very agile, right. but they still were the big man. Keith Lee wrestles... Like a guy that's way lighter than him and way more agile mm -hmm. than him, but it, it's his style. It works, right? And that's they don't what know what to do. The with dance. That. That's Listen, what brought him to the dance to begin with. 
Andrade, no excuse, right? No excuse. Mm -hmm. Alistair Black, no freaking excuse. They invested so much work into this guy. And what did they do? Yeah, man, one of the coolest entrances like of the of recent memory, right? Hard hitting, tough guy, you know. And they made him a when he was, and he made they made him into a freaking angry pirate. So there you go, Ricochet, nothing, nothing, zero. It's bizarre. So, it's it's bizarre. It 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 really like perceptively, it really makes you think about like that singular vision that exists at the top of the food chain. You know, where it's like if this doesn't fit the vision of what I want. I don't really care for it, you know? And that vision is generally, yeah, your, your bigger dudes, you know, like your Romans, your Brocks, your Drews, and, you know, Bobby Lashley too, you know? And but, it's yeah. not a knock on them at all, but it's like that singular tunnel vision of like, we need to show them like big muscle, tough. By the champion, way, that's fine. You, know? you could have both, right? You could have both. Why isn't, I mean, th th why isn't Ricochet, the cruiserweight champion and have that air you know have those matches on on raw why or honestly like u.s champ right or u.s champ or why don't you move some of these guys back down to nxc you saw the success finn balor had i Absolutely, mean listen yeah. fat balor was always at the top of the food chain because he was he was one of the original <laughs> projects for hunter but right they didn't treat him well on the main roster they didn't position him well yeah obviously he got injured and other things happened but Take this guy, you move them to NXT, and he he really is the main <clears throat> force on that roster. You could do the same with Ricochet. You could do the same with Aleister Black. You could do the yeah. same with Keith Lee. <laughs> if you don't know how to use them, why hurt them? Why not? You have an avenue for them. You have some place to put yeah. them. So, well, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens after Mania. I know that there's a ton of plans after Mania, even though we don't really know full plans for Mania. But... Uh, right. That that that's one aspect of this. So let's. I got. Are you go ready for? Are you ready for our forty-five hours of coverage for WrestleMania? Oh my God! Uh, you want to? <laughs> let's talk about the WrestleMania schedule here, and then we'll go into some of the other news, like John Lauren and I just returning as head of talent talent relations here. So WrestleMania Ooh. schedule for the week uh, is out. So this is how this this is working. We have like nine days of wrestling back it's to a back, lot, dude. Okay, it's so a lot. Monday. The Monday Night Raw Go Home Show is April 5th. Tuesday okay. is the 2021 Hall of Fame Ceremony live on Peacock. Cool. Okay, April fun. 6th. Uh, Wednesday, the 7th, NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver Night 1 on the USA Network. As, by the way, Great. how many weeks ago did we say this? Uh, we, we did mention this. Uh, About I hope a week Edward and a half Zoma ago. Shows up. About a week and yeah. a half ago, we brought this up. Uh, kudos to my friend over... Over at, at at NBC. Uh, so that's night one. Night two, so you got a two-night NXT, is Thursday the 8th, NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver, night two, exclusively on Peacock. I'm mm -hmm. very curious how they're doing this. And also, this is very smart because they're getting two shows back-to-back -back on a very busy week, so they're going to yeah. be able to scale it properly for WrestleMania, hopefully. We'll see. Uh, Friday the 9th, you got Friday Night SmackDown, the official go-home for WrestleMania. Saturday the 10th, WrestleMania Night 1, exclusively on Peacock. Sa Sunday the 11th, WrestleMania Night 2, again on Peacock. Wow. Then you got Monday Night Raw on the 12th, right? The 12th, you got Monday Night Raw. Tuesday, you got the debut of NXT on, U on uh, Tuesday nights on USA. That is a lot, dude. That is a lot of wrestling. A lot of WWE wrestling. I'm not even adding so, AEW, and I'm not adding Impact and MLW and Ring of Honor and everything or else. New Japan. Yeah, or so New Japan. I posted a question on Twitter the other night asking people, hey, are you guys excited for WrestleMania? And they pretty much got a resounding no. Listen, I'm always excited for WrestleMania because it's WrestleMania, but they've done a terrible job at talking mm -hmm. about what they're going to do here, right? The card isn't finalized. We know two of the matches, at least. Right, yeah. we know that it's going to be Edge and um, and Reigns, and we know it's going to be Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Everything else is kind of still up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, the other news is the ticket <clears throat> sales. So tickets go on sale tomorrow, Tuesday, the sixteenth. Limited. They're doing. They're not releasing all of them on Tuesday, but WWE wants to put over forty thousand people in that mm -hmm. building. <sighs> How big is the building? What's the capacity on that building? Oh, it's big. It's like seventy-five, eighty thousand. Has to be. You can you can distance 
You can distance you could. it properly. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, listen, I'm not even going to, I don't want to, I don't even want to go down the rabbit hole of speculating should they mm. or shouldn't they, right? I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. What I am yeah, going to yeah. question is, do they have the ability to sell 90,000 tickets? Yes. In, in the, 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 the era, the moment that we're in. You know, that's my question here. Will they be able to sell 45,000 tickets per night? For yes. WrestleMania with absolutely with, by the way, less than one month, less than yes. 30 days. They have like 25 days to do this. Normally, WrestleMania tickets go on sale. The majority of the tickets sell immediately, but they still sell thousands of tickets leading up to the day. Uh, my answer is yes, 100 percent. You know why? People want to go see WrestleMania. They haven't been to a live show in a very long time. Uh, this has been a year of staying indoors for the most part. I think I think those tickets will sell out within a day, to be honest with you. And plus, by that time, you would think and hope that most people would be vaccinated. So it would just kind of make make sense that they would feel a little bit safer. Again, we're not talking about, is this the right thing to do? Your question is... Will they be able to do it? Yeah, they're will they it. be able to do it? Will yeah. will people want to go? Listen, I, I I would say I think in this moment people are getting very antsy to go out. Hundred uh, percent. Like I, I stayed in Manhattan, right? I'm vaccinated, so I don't I don't have a lot of the gripes that a lot of people do. But even if mm. I wasn't, I probably would have still done this trip to the city. Uh, but. I got to tell you, a lot of people are out. A lot of people are going out to eat. They're going out to drink. They want to do stuff. They want to be entertained. Uh, so is it possible? Yes, I think so. Um, I don't think we're going to have international, you know, a big portion of WrestleMania is international. I don't think we're going to see a lot of that. But, you know, if you're in Florida, if you're in New York, you're a two hour, two hour flight away from Tampa, you might consider this. You might consider going. And. I don't know what they're going to be capable of. The rumor now is that Vince wants to do 45,000 per night. Uh, listen, we, we confirmed the 25K, 30K number. I don't know yeah. if they, they you know, 15,000 pe more people in the building, they feel like they could do it. All right. Let's see. I think they could do it. I, I feel like, you know, like how many, how many crazy diehard wrestling fans do you personally know that will get on a plane to go to WrestleMania in a normal situation. Many. I, I don't mm. know. I haven't gauged this. I, I think that's a good question. And tomorrow will be a great indicator when we see the tickets go on sale and, and how yeah, people yeah. react to it. Um, We're going to need to do a couple of videos for that, too. Yes. Just throwing it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll do that. So uh, tomorrow tickets go on sale for WrestleMania. So we'll see what happens there. Very interesting. Uh, NXT television also had a actually let me skip that because I'll go into <laughs> NXT TV after this uh, I want to go into the impact news because I feel like this is a big story for impact wrestling Rich yeah, Swan, yeah. there was a pay-per-view uh, at sacrifice on Saturday mm -hmm. Rich Swan and Moose competed in a unification match between the impact championship and the TNA championship funny that they still have the TNA title still on TV yeah yeah uh, you know, Moose has been walking around. It's it's almost like the Legends title for him, right? They they've had mm. these two titles. Uh, Rich Swan defeated Moose with a cutter. So Moose went off the top rope, did some crazy, I guess, crossbody, or he was attempting something, and he caught him, and he hit mm. him with a cutter. Got one. So now that means Rich Swan will face Kenny Omega in a title for title match. Both titles on the line of Rebellion on April twenty fourth. Crazy. This could mean that obviously Rich Swan could become uh, the unified Impact and the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. By the way, the title is now the Impact World Championship. So mm -hmm. now they have a world title once again. Um, Kenny Omega most likely will win this and he will start his belt collector gimmick because technically he still has a Triple A title. He has a Triple A title, he's got the AEW title, uh, he's definitely going to get that Impact title. And then I think maybe one or two more. And then that's when you see the implosion. Everything starts falling apart. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, Finn Juice defeated the Good Brothers to become Impact Tag Team Champions, champions at Sacrifice. Meaning we're going to see the Impact title in New Japan? I think so. I think you're going to get some like wild stuff now. Like in the next year, like once like the world is this is like wrestling is like turning the crank. 
and it's going to let it go once the world starts opening up more. We're going to see some. I think we're going to see some wild shit, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, excited for that. I think that's very interesting. And I think it's great news for Impact because you could tell that the ratings have been better. Um, mm-hmm. I want to get into the to the uh, AW pay-per-view numbers also right after this. Sure. But I do want to spend some time on this. John Laurinaitis has assumed his role as talent as uh, as with one of the heads of talent relations. I'm back. Uh, I'm back. I find back. this. This is a very interesting move. And I, I, I was very busy all week, so I didn't get a yeah. chance to email anybody about this. I'll ask this week and I'll probably get an answer now that it's been a couple days. Uh, very strange. I'm very surprised that they went to John Laurinaitis. You know, everybody knows the stories about mm-hmm. him as as head of creative. He wasn't very much into the wrestling or athleticism, and he hired based on physique more, especially with the women. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. that whole divas era was a John Laurinaitis thing uh, yeah. between him and uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. Me. We know the story about him, unfortunately, hiring the wrong one-legged wrestler. Insane. Uh, which is hysterical. Yeah, boss. I hired him, but he's really old. They were looking for Zach Gowan, and they hired somebody else. They hired Zach Galifianakis. Zach Galifianakis, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> he's Greek. Uh, he's great. So funny. So I, I was told a r- bizarre reason for this, and they said that okay. there's going to be a lot of crossover with the Bellas. And, I believe it. It's and not that bizarre, Andrew. His daughter, his daughter is mm-hmm. going to be has a. Uh, listen, I don't watch Total Bellas, so I don't know if this has already lie. happened or it's happening. <laughs> you love Total Bellas, man. Hey guys, it's Andy <laughs> Bella, and he's <laughs> back. <laughs> and I just want to let you know that if you want to get with me, you can't. That's what he says now. <laughs> and then, oh, and then I just shake my ass, but I twerk. Like like mm. at the Grammys, like I'm performing yeah. WAP with Rich. You got to learn how to. We need that man. Photoshop, by the way. But I don't want to be Cardi. I want to be the other one. You could be Cardi B. I'll be Cardi B. What's the other one's name? Uh, the other one. Um, the Stallion. Megan Stallion. Megan. I was gonna call her Melanie the Stallion, but that's not her I, name. <laughs> I'll be Cardi B, but you have to call me uh, Captain Picardi B. Okay, Captain Picardi B. I like it. <laughs> uh, so so John Lorne is about. I don't. Very strange because, uh, listen, you can speculate and say, listen, this is Vince's move to put people that he trusts in positions. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we see that uh, we see Bruce Pritchard, you know, getting murdered right now uh, mm-hmm. and extremely overworked and overwhelmed with his position. So maybe this will help a little bit. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to affect it, but I don't think John Lauren. I just had a phenomenal track record with a lot of the wrestlers. Nope. 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 So we'll see. <laughs> nope. He's very forthcoming uh, with his very mistakes. forthcoming. Very forthcoming. Uh, NXT news. A lot of people. How many people sent us a message asking for an update on NXT from me? So many people. <laughs> oh so many God. people. Um, I got so many DMs about this. So a lot of people are like, well, now it's not going to happen because NHL is signed with ESPN. Mm-hmm. This has nothing to do with it. NHL still needs to air the playoffs on USA. Yeah. So they're still going to put it on Wednesday unless something has totally shifted that I'm not aware of. And right, right. as of Friday, when I reached out to people in, at NBC, they said, no, it's still going on Tuesday. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if anything has really changed as far as I know. No, the answer is no. As of right now, Monday at almost 11, p- 11 a.m. So we'll see what happens. I'll follow up again this week and I'll give you guys some more answers. And uh, Peacock Migration starts this Thursday. Most recent content will go up first, obviously, but the archive content will be available before SummerSlam. So they're going, they're not migrating properly. I don't like how they're doing this migration um, because they are not migrating. They're starting over. It's not really a migration. So initially, I was told the plan was there were two scenarios here, right? One plan was to have everything migrated automatically. You just log in with your WWE account and you're done. It's over, right? You're logged in. Now you need to create a whole separate account. WWE Network gets out. They're going to phase it away. They're not, uh, they're not doing this other, other thing that we, we thought they would do. The other option was to have some sort of, when you go to WWE.com, it just redirects you with a Peacock logo on the side. Yeah. 
It's like it was still going to be what you think of the WWE Network until they got their their shit together. That's not happening either. But the WWE Network is still functional 100% outside of the US. Okay. So it's I very confusing. Be, I if if I were to do this, I would for example use a friend's address in the UK or somewhere else mm-hmm. or use their WWE login information because I don't want I don't like that I don't have access to my stuff. Or a VPN. Where the hell am I going to watch Mid-South Wrestling daily? Mm -hmm. In a very seductive and sensual way, might I add. (laughs) I I have a thing for a young Jim Ross, so what can I do? Uh, No, (laughs) no, but you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this is going to be a little bit of a disaster, the migration. And think about how many people will not migrate over because you need to now recreate accounts. Yeah, I mean, that's a pain, you know, and plus, like, with every single, I feel like with every single account you have for everything you have and subscribe to, at some point during the month, you have to re-enter your information, and you know what? It makes me want to throw my computer out a window. I, yeah, ab- <laughs> listen, I know. Same here. <laughs> uh, guys, submit your questions in the chat room, by the way. Uh, we're going to be doing questions in about 10 minutes. Rich, did you yes, see the AEW numbers for their pay-per-view for Revolution? I did, man. Very impressive. I believe it was, what, 125,000 buys? So I, I got a... This is from Sean, which he's always right, okay? Sean mm. is one of the most... He does the most due diligence when it comes to releasing a story here. I'm going to yeah. say his number is off here. Um, okay. He, according to the Fightful Select, uh, he's reporting that... Uh, and, and by the way, I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just based on what I was told. I'm going based on my information. 125,000 worldwide buys. That is absolutely correct without the pay-per-view buys. That is just mm. uh, BR Live and Fight. That is okay. not pay-per-view numbers. So he's reporting that the gross is just over $5 million. I was I was told that the number is over $6 million for this. Interesting. Okay. Right? The final number has not been reported yet, obviously, because it, it's... You don't have the pay-per-view numbers. That that takes a little bit of time. I expect it to be maybe closer to 175, not 125. But that's, again, mm-hmm. listen, you're, it, it's it, it's fine. It's the same number. Let's just consider it the same number. But the, the interesting part is that this is the most grossing non-WWE pay-per-view in over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is the most watched non-WWE pro wrestling pay-per-view since 1999. Crazy. This has topped... The, I mean, we're, we're, we're... Think about that. Think about how bad WCW had to have been doing in 99. <laughs> right, right, to, right. To get 125 to 175,000 views on a pay-per-view. They were really bottom of the barrel at that point. I think 2000 and 2001, they, they kind of fixed this up a little bit, but... If this is the case, I mean, that is wild to think that WCW was not able to do more than 125,000 buys on a pay-per-view for two years. Yeah, dude, that's bizarre. Uh, it's really cool, though, that we're seeing like this trend of this, this many people bought this thing, which is awesome. You know, A lot of people bought it. I, I'm curious if they're going to be disappointed. That's the... Um, well, I actually have numbers here. Do you want to see what the numbers are? For, yeah, okay. yeah, let's do it. So this I think, is interesting. Yeah. Uh, this WCW. Right. We're going to go with WCW numbers. This is okay, courtesy okay. of WrestleNomics, okay? Which mm. he, their numbers are always absolutely correct. Um, Greed did 50,000 buys, the last pay-per-view. Okay. Super Brawl Revenge did 70,000. Sin did 80. Mayhem did 55. Halloween Havoc, 2,000, 75,000. Uh, 100,000. Bash at the Beach, 2,000 did 100,000 buys. That was the infamous Hulk Hogan uh mm-hmm. you know ban from WCW Starcade 99 did 145,000 wow. sold out does uh, does 115,000 so Stargate 99 Stargate Star Starcade 99 is the last 100 uh, last pay-per-view that did that kind of number wow and that's 20 years beat ago sold out they beat sold out 2000 so it looks like they beat they beat um, Starcade 99, yeah, 145,000. The one before that did 200, 230, 130 for Fall Brawl. It seems like everything fell apart in 2000. Yeah, for everything. For everything, yeah. So very interesting. Were you disappointed that you had to pay for the AEW pay-per-view? 
No, no, I, I was fine with it. A lot of people were though. A lot of people lot were of very people, disappointed. A lot of people were upset that it's fifty. It was fifty bucks. Do you know what the most ordered pay per view in WCW's history was? Star K ninety seven. Yep, seven hundred and fifty thousand buys. I was the right. Same, the same as ECW One Night Stand one. Oh, that was such a great pay per view. I'm That's sorry. Like I'm sorry. No, no, I'm wrong there. I'm sorry. Invasion pay per view. Same as the invasion. I was close though. Same as the invasion. So, uh, big news. I mean, I think that's phenomenal. Now, now it's a matter of are people going to be disappointed with the reveal and with the um, the the ending to the main event? I don't know. That's to be seen. It, it, it was a dud. It absolutely was a dud. Mm. They did a good job on 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 AEW at attempting to address what happened. Well, I think Mox got ahead of it with his end of the night speech. And then they rolled with that, you know, because yeah. after the show went off the air, he was saying that Kenny Omega is not a good bomb maker. And they furthered that with Tony Khan saying something and then going into the whole thing that happened on Wednesday. Listen, I appreciate the fact that they didn't they didn't make they didn't patronize the fans. Right. They didn't yeah. make they didn't go business as usual. They didn't blow it up to be the greatest thing in the world. Uh, I feel like you can't avoid that comparison with WWE. Like if WWE had a dud, they'd make you think it was like the greatest thing that ever happened. Yeah. Like forever. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, they did acknowledge it. And you're right. He did get ahead of the story and, and they mm. really went with it. So Tony Khan. So Moxley, obviously, after the match, said that this sucked. Right. Pretty much. He can't make a freaking bomb. Uh, Tony Khan mentioned it in his mm -hmm. post interview and on on the show, Eddie Kingston and John Moxley address what happened. Kingston implied that he had a panic attack and he and he kind of had tunnel vision because it reminded him at the time that he was in Rikers right. waiting <laughs> to be sent to prison. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sat in a jail cell. And they were going to send him to Rikers or they were going to send him to Sing Sing. And he had this panic attack and he didn't know what to do. And he just just covered Mox thinking mm -hmm. uh, something bad was going to happen. At the end of the show, he came out. So you want to break that down? What happened? Because you watched it live and you guys were losing it in the chat. I had to watch it a couple days later. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, do you mean the, the Kingston part where he covered him? No, no, no. Uh, the promo between Kingston, Ma uh, Kenny, Callis, and the laying on the oh, floor, on North Wednesday. South. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Went oh, north yeah, south. yeah, yeah. So I I couldn't stop laughing. Kenny comes out with Don Callis and the Good Brothers on Wednesday and uh, starts really leaning into Eddie Kingston, making fun of him. And I believe the phrase used was 69 me Don. North South fun. position. North South <laughs> position. 69 me Don making fun of how Kingston covered Mox. And I was like, you know what? What a great way <laughs> to turn the tables on the dud explosion and to make fun of these guys. First of all, I also, can't believe they said it. I can't believe he said yeah. six to nine me on, <laughs> on TV. And on Don got up to him. <laughs> and Don, actually, Don didn't. And then Kenny mm -hmm. shimmied him on top of him. So I have a, <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Did you ever think we were going to see uh, a Mox kingston kenny omega feud with the addition of christian of all people no, like, in I think your life pretty, listen i think it's pretty cool listen i i, yeah. I it's different right and I, i'm not even going to go into like is it going to work out well is it going to be good mm. it, it's regardless of of the end result i think it's a really interesting combination of people in a mm. match including the good brothers too you know they're they're involved don Callis has become i, I mean you want to talk about a revival of a career I don't think. Oh, for sure. We, I don't think we've had anybody. I, I mean, obviously, someone's going to find it, but uh, mm. it's a rarity in pro wrestling to be in it, then have all these opportunities in front of you. None of it happens, really. And right. you just revive your entire career uh, on a fluke, really, because mm -hmm. the only reason why Don Callis came back into wrestling is because Steve Carino had to went to WWE. Was it Carino? Because it wasn't Carino calling the New Japan stuff. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was calling. He, I, somebody correct me. I know. Listen, I know he was doing Ring of Honor, but I believe Carino was on the New Japan stuff. And maybe I'm wrong. I think. How did Don uh, Cal's get involved with New Japan? Someone. I, I'm almost 100 percent. This is how it was. I think it was Kenny. I think it was Kenny saying, hey, you know, why don't you come and do commentary over here? We're trying to do this American expansion. But I don't think Kenny knew him. 
I think they, I, he told Don Callis was on, uh, I think Jericho's podcast, uh, about a month ago. And they he knew told of the whole each story, other. um, where they're all like, it's like the Canadian connection with like Kenny's uncle, like the chic Kenny's uncle and, and Callis trained together, but I don't think he remembers Kenny, but he mm. does. I don't think they were like close. But you know what I, I mean? think it, it was either Jericho or Kenny that that brought him on for commentary. And it could have been Jericho that got, yeah. the, that got the that yeah, that got the ball rolling. Yeah. So, uh, very interesting. I mean, it, how how things happen. But this guy, you gotta mm. you gotta really give it up to him. He he's such a talent. Mm. Very under recognized in his ECW run. Yeah. Uh, as a color commentator, uh, very underutilized in WWE as the Jackal. Uh, yes. Can you believe that this whole guy's career would have taken a whole different turn if he had signed that contract with WCW to be yeah. Rick Martel's tag team partner? Pretty crazy. Pretty good. Actually, it's no. Crazy. In WWF, he was supposed to go to WWF as Rick Martel's pa partner, right? It's it's pretty crazy how like some like stuff happens like this in wrestling, and then you know, like twenty years later, you get not not even a payoff, but you get like a crazy resurgence, right? That doesn't I, happen in any other sport. You know, there's a trend on TikTok, which I want to I want to do on our TikTok. Mm -hmm. By the way, TikTok, Mattman, Mattman Wrestling, Mattman Pro Wrestling on TikTok. You can follow us there. Uh, Jonathan does some great work there and puts up a bunch of clips and a bunch of funny stuff from the show. But there's a thing saying, like, what's a big historical domino effect that you can't believe? Right. Or or mm -hmm. that that made that was a big deal. There's so many of those in wrestling, like. I love doing the what ifs. Like, what if Bret Hart never left? Like, the whole Bret yeah. Hart 20 year contract thing was a domino effect of the whole Austin run, you know? Yeah. So, there's yeah. a lot of these domino effects. And this is one, you know, if, if him and Rick Martel did become tag team partners in WCW, what mm -hmm. would have happened? I don't think uh, he wouldn't be having any of this right now. I agree with that. I also I think it's a lot of fun to do that, especially, and we always go to like the modern day of like, if Cody never left, and hit the indies with such vigor. I Cody? feel like we, yeah, I feel like we wouldn't really have a lot of what we have right now. You know what? That that is a domino effect that I love to spend more time on one day. Uh, yeah. Cody's indie run and his his because remember it was a temporary run. Cody did not want to wrestle anymore like that. He wanted mm -hmm. he wanted to get more into acting. So there was an article around the time that he left. And he's like, listen, I'm going to do these every now and then, but I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it for fun and to help revitalize a little bit of wrestling putting me on a card like remember he gave that guy money the money back to buy a ring because mm. a ring was broken so he bought him a ring um it was more yeah. charity work on cody's behalf but you know what he had to relearn how to work a non-wwe style yeah. and he did a great well, job with it well he made that list too and stuck with it he did stick you with know it, like yeah. the dream list of opponents and then meeting the bucks and then uh oh meeting kenny and then doing the bullet club stuff and that's spiraling into like what we have now the bet with Meltzer and all that you know it's very fascinating the trajectory of like there's one dude who's the son of the son of a plumber yeah yeah very interesting stuff um what do you want to oh. touch on rich well we we also have uh the premiere of aew dark elevation tonight with the big show on commentary. Well, Paul White. Yes. The yeah, former big show. So right now we have three AEW shows and mm. with a fourth one in the works. Pretty fascinating. Man. Because how there's going to be another feel? one. Are you going to watch tonight? Or are you going to watch the AEW? I'll watch. Dark? Yeah, it's on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's on YouTube yeah. at 7. Squeezing it again before Raw. I think I'm going to check it out tonight. It should be fun. I really want to see uh, Paul White on commentary. Um, I also feel like this is going to lead up to you ready? Yeah. Cody and Paul White teaming up against Pentagon and Shaq. Oh, man, I would love that. I think we're going to I think I have this weird feeling that th that's the match we're going to end up getting. Is Shaq going to do this thing? Is he going to do this thing? <laughs> yes. Whatever that is, he's going to do it. This thing? Yeah, he's going to do that. Is that. Isn't that what Penta does? He goes like this. Bah! He goes no? uh, zero, zero, the up and down. Yeah, this yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. He's going to do that. No, no. I like They're it gonna... with like, like a limp four horsemen. Like <laughs> you just got your nails done. You're just air drying them. I'm telling you, man, Shaq is going to come out dressed like Penta at some point. <laughs> oh, my God. I... You know what? I would, I would eat. I would eat my shoe. I would eat. I would eat my shoe if that happened. I would love to see uh, it. I feel like that's. I'm, I want you want to manifest a relationship with David Arquette. I want to manifest seeing Shaq 
in a full blown Pentazero Miedo outfit. I love it. I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, SmackDown. Uh, a lot of stuff happened on SmackDown. It was an interesting SmackDown. You know, they're they're building the story for Sasha and um, they Jay, they finally started doing it with Sa- mm-hmm. for for the title match. But what's happening with Daniel Bryan right now? That's a good question. What is happening with Daniel Bryan right now? Is, is he, he getting leaving? a title is he match? Staying? Is he getting a title match at WrestleMania? Uh, yeah. Let's say yes. With who? Let's say yes. Uh, I don't know. Bobby Lashley. You know, <laughs> you know what? I, would, <laughs> I got I got to talk about Bobby Lashley and, and the planet of the rocks uh, because this guy is unbelievable. Um, so next week, Edge versus Jay Uso. Winner is yeah. a special enforcer for the universal title match at Fastlane. Uh, Jay Uso is wrestling, but Jimmy is coming back okay. like now. So Confusing. most likely he'll probably there's a pay-per-view this Sunday, boys and girls. I think a lot of people don't remember that. Is there really? There is. Fast lane is Sunday. Oh boy. By the way, we'll be live <laughs> doing a watch along on Sunday. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing it on our channel or we'll be doing it on the F4W channel. I'll confirm that mm-hmm. and we'll announce it on Thursday, but we'll be doing a watch along for sure. The last pay-per-view before WrestleMania. Uh, and how many matches do we have here? Here we go. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's go. So we got Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan for the Universal Championship. <clears throat> but man, what a what a great... You know what? If you want to do that Roman Reigns-Goldberg match, I'm just going to say, if you want it to mean enough, but not in a title match, this is how you do it. Mm. Or what if you have... Daniel Bryan beat Roman Reigns in a weirdo finish, which I don't expect them to do that. I think what's going to happen is Jimmy Uso is going to come out, cost Daniel Bryan the t- championship, and now you have Jimmy Uso part of the crew, right? <clears throat> okay. But if you were to take the title off Daniel Bryan, now you got a Maybe Daniel not. Bryan and Edge match. You could possibly do that. Roman Reigns and off, Edge you could still do. You could incorporate Bill Goldberg because I know you want to use him, right? They're dying to use him. You could put Bill sure. Goldberg in this match somehow. There's a lot of moving parts, so fine, whatever. Uh, you also have <clears throat> Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler versus Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. This is when you're going to see the flip happen, right? Mm-hmm. The full mm-hmm. turn. Absolutely. Apollo, Apollo Crews versus Big E for the Intercontinental Championship. That is what is announced so far. Uh, are you looking forward to it? Eh, not really. Yeah. Also, everything you said about the Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns stuff happening. Guess what? what? Not going to happen. <laughs> It's not. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's business as usual until WrestleMania. Edge beats Roman. Uh, Edge gets well, what the if, title. What if Roman <clears throat> wrestles two nights? What if that title is defended two nights? Listen, I would love that, but judging by how uh, poorly booked and uh, the perception of WWE, I have again low to no expectations from anything cool happening with any of this stuff. I, hate I know to it's say unfortunate. It. It's really unfortunate. I do think Edge is gonna win though, and I think that's gonna be really cool. But. They may also do business as usual. Edge loses, and then yeah. Goldberg shows up at WrestleMania to yeah. challenge Roman for a, the future backlash or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever whatever after WrestleMania. Whatever the hell is there. Uh, NXT had an interesting night. They had two big announcements on NXT. One mm-hmm. being that Stand and Deliver will be two nights, like we mentioned, during WrestleMania oh. week. And the second, mm-hmm. and this was, you know, I, I don't... So I was, I had seen these titles. Okay. Okay. I was told yeah. I cannot talk. About, I mean, they've had they've had these tag titles for God knows how long. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were gonna use them earlier, and then they decided to wait till the Dusty Classic. Okay. The Dusty Women's Classic. The Dusty Women's Classic. But here's the problem: the belt wasn't totally completed. Okay. I had seen the actual image, like like the 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 CG image of this thing. I was like, oh, okay, very standard for NXT. Works out. The mm-hmm. belt wasn't completed. For the Dusty Classic. So they did this convoluted thing where they challenged for the for the raw for the main roster titles, didn't get it, so now they were presented. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They could have done something else with this presentation. They didn't have to just hand it over to Raquel and Dakota Kai, but they were <laughs> right. announced the winners and they were awarded the brand new pair of titles. Great. In a in a strange thing. That I I mean I was very surprised. Mm-hmm. Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart defeated 
the NXT Tag Team Champions, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, to win the titles. Great. I, I like that. I like that a lot. It worked out. I think it worked out, mm. but it was it was weird how everything fell apart. I think this was always the plan. They just needed mm-hmm. to jump ahead and get to it, which whatever. Yeah. It happens sometimes. Uh, you also saw Io Shirai defeating Tony Storm to retain the championship. Um, I would I, I think the story is going to be Io and and Raquel. Really? I think that's going to be the story here. OK. Yeah. Jordan Devlin is also on his way to the States to confront Escobar. In a mm-hmm. unification match, possibly a takeover. Because remember, you have two champions. You have you have Escobar, which is the interim champion currently, and you have Jordan Devlin, the actual champion. He just hasn't been able to defend the title here because of mm-hmm. the lockdown. So you have two titles, uh, two champions. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, you could do a ladder match. You could do an awesome ladder match with these guys to unify I the think, titles. I think they're super talented, and you can definitely get something like really, really awesome. Out of like a Jordan Devlin versus Santos yeah. Escobar. I'm all about Santos Escobar, by the way. That dude rocks. Yeah, yeah, very cool. He's very good. Uh, also, we saw NXT champion Finn Balor defeat Adam Cole. Kyle O'Reilly distracted Cole, and he beat the crap out of him. Balor was in the ring looking on when he turned around to see Karrion Cross. Whew. Said, what took you so long? Goosebumps. They Whew. book Finn. Finn might Whew. be the best booked person in WWE Great. right now next to Great ending. look i got good look at yeah. this i actually got goosebumps when i repeat it i think you know it's moments like that it's so simple right so simple yeah. but yet it works it's so effective less is more and this was a great example of less is more uh this is gonna Absolutely. be a cool match i'm excited to see it you know they've been teasing at it they've been building at it and, and now we're gonna get it and obviously perfect time to do it during the takeovers so uh mm-hmm. You know, and you can start off hot on that first Tuesday with your new champion being Karrion Cross holding the title, you know, and figuring Full out what's demon. happening next. But you know what I do want them to start doing the night mm-hmm. after that big WrestleMania weekend? I think NXT should have the same surprise appearances. Who shows yes. up? Big angles yeah. being created. I think they need to start doing that much like how WWE does it. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent, dude. Like that. That would add so much fun to NXT. NXT's NXT has been very solid. It's been good. Like stuff like this there. The end of the last month of NXT, all the episodes have been great. Yeah. Um, doing the carrying cross Finn Balor thing like I didn't we knew it was coming, but this was just like you said, when it's simple, it works. You know, uh, Finn turning around saying what took you so long. Uh, do you think we're going to get like a full blown like demon versus uh like other demon kind of thing yeah i don't know i i think we are going to see him come out as maybe you have the first demon no i wouldn't have him do the demon i think that would be the the secondary one you know okay have him be the demon and then and then do his thing or do like half of his face with the maybe half his face i don't know they could do something we'll see we got a month right yeah we got a month uh what else do we have in the notes uh let's see here um fast lane we talked about uh i mean we can jump into the questions if you want a lot of this stuff i have here molly holly first 2021 entrant of the hall of fame pretty cool yeah very cool uh yeah i think we can jump into the questions unless you want to do the preview for this week's yeah, yeah. W. let's do that it's like saint patty's day uh slam saint patty's day slam stupid name Let's see. What do we got here? Make it a massacre. Uh, St. Patrick's Day massacre. Mox and Kingston versus the Good Brothers. Can't okay. wait. Wrestle cool. Boner on into high it. alert. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus Penta. Can't cool. wait. Into it. Love it. I do like Penta in a suit. And last week when he came out calling out Cody in Spanish and English. with uh, Yeah, I like that a lot. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was great. great. Uh, Jurassic Express and Bear Country versus Matt Hardy. I thought, Hardy. He was gonna, <clears throat> I thought he was going to call the, the baby that's too stupid. <laughs> I don't care your, for your stupid baby. You know, I, I thought he would say something. Baby, yeah. <laughs> it'd be amazing. Imagine um, he's calling Cody a stupid baby, and that's his line now. It'll be so good, I'm and I can't it. wait for him to be like, "Oh yeah, Cody, well, meet my new best friend, Shaq Cerro Miedo. and it's effing Shaq, dude, with the face paint full, and the mask and everything, full Pentagon makeup. I think he'd do it oh, too. I'm calling you out, Cody. With my buddy Pen- Pentagon, uh, Jurassic Express and Bear Country versus Matt Hardy, Private Party, The Butcher and the Blade. Uh, Jade Cargill will be in action. <clears throat> you have an unsanctioned anything goes match 
between uh, Dr. Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa, which okay. I think is going to be cool. It's it's only it's honestly only a matter of time before either one of these gets that AEW uh, women's title. You know what? I'm looking at this card, and it's amazing how you could be excited for matches if you produce really good matches and post them prior to the show, right? Oh, like, what's absolutely. The what are we seeing today on? What are we going to see on Raw? What are Who we going to see tonight on Raw? But even when they tell you the match, here's the problem. You don't believe the match. <laughs> right, you know what right. I mean? Like John Moxley, Eddie Kingston versus the Good Brothers. You know what? I'm into that. I think that's a cool match. Cody and Penta, right? That's that's mm. a really cool matchup that you really haven't seen much of. Right. If this match was the main event on Raw, I would tell you, oh, they're going to go half. They're going to go at half speed mm -hmm. and they're going to do some sort of bizarre ending that nobody oh, wants yeah. to see. Yeah. Yeah. Very so weird. <laughs> very interesting. Like if you saw, I mean, just just even take this match. You, you got the Good Brothers. You got Gals and Anderson against John Moxley, and give me a WWE uh, against Dean Ambrose, and give me an equivalent to Eddie Kingston. Give me uh, somebody. <laughs> oh my god! You know, no, no, no. You need someone a little bigger. Let, let's let's go someone a little bigger. He's good on the mic. I see like their mic skills are very common. No, no, I, I like it. Know? Listen, Enzo's cool. I, I'm into him. I don't know why. Okay. I think it's it's a New York thing, but uh, yeah, give, me, give me somebody else. Uh, Eddie uh, Kingston and Bray Wyatt. Uh, Bray Wyatt. Okay. Promo, somebody. I'm I'm going promo. Promo, promo, promo Bray promo. Wyatt. Okay. Swamp Bray, Bray, Bray Wyatt. Yeah, yeah. Like, would classic. you give a shit? Uh, would you give a shit that that's a raw match? No. Why? Because they've trained you into mm -hmm. thinking, well, it's a raw match, so it's not going to mean anything. It only pay per views only mean something. Barely. Barely. So <laughs> fascinating how we're talking about two matches on a show mm -hmm. that, you know, listen, they're going to be fine matches. They're going to be good, but you're kind of excited for it because you haven't really seen it much and they're promoting it. So now I know, oh, man, yeah. you know what? I kind of want to see this Penta match with Cody. Amazing what happens when you promote matches. Yeah. And you want to see Mox and Kingston versus the Good Brothers because, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be yeah. hard hitting. Uh, there's something charming about all those dudes wrestling each other with like no restraint, you know? Yeah. Q&A time, boys and girls. Submit your chat room questions to MG Geek and Jonathan, and they'll post it in our notes, and we will uh, we'll go through with it. All right. Uh, you ready for the first question, Andrew? Let's do it. Andrew? All right. Andrew. Uh, Eric Prezano asks, do I need to cancel the WWE Network subscription? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, 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 will, I will ask all those questions this week. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I would say, I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, fair enough. Sorry. Uh, Transferring Heat podcast. Uh, thoughts on AEW's ratings from last week? Um, the ratings were very competitive. I did not. I did think NXT would do much better because they promoted some really awesome matches for this week's TV. Um, mm. For last week's TV, I should say. But. AEW should have done a much higher number. I'm very curious as to why they didn't. Uh, I don't think it's an indicator of anything, but it is interesting that they didn't really have, like, I, I expected at least 800,000 views. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I was in the low eights, if I were to guess. But listen, anything, there's so many different factors here. So we'll see what happens this week. But. Uh, I would say that if I was AEW, I would be a little bit disappointed in those numbers. If I was NXT, I would be happy that I was able to put together a lot more people. You know, they got the, the number went up by like 20 percent. Right. Uh, NXT. So they they listen, it's, it's a very small pool. They're working with the same one and a half million people. Sometimes one does better than the other, but there should be more at this point, especially yeah. after a big pay-per-view like that. Good answer. Um, Fifth generation Carney asks, do you guys want to see Timmy Thatcher join Imperium? No, I don't want to see that because I think that's going to take away from the the tiny bit of personality we've seen from him. Uh, and, yeah. and he's good on his own with this. I, I, I'm not a listen. If you've listened to the show for years, you know that I've seen Timothy Thatcher wrestle. God knows how many times he never mm. does. He's a phenomenal technician. He's a great wrestler, but they've never emphasized on a character and a personality. And we're starting mm -hmm. to see that now. I think if you go to Imperium, it might it might remove them from that because those guys aren't yeah. very uh, they're not loud personalities. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree with that. Also, like I said a couple of weeks ago, I really want to see how this uh, quote unquote golden golden lovers relationship with Tommaso Ciampa works out. Oh yeah, it's, it's very bizarre. it's it's a very will they or won't they situation. I think. Will they or won't they? Um, let's see. Does Ant? This is uh the question question the mark. I haven't watched WWE in a long time. Just no interest. Are they still using Goldberg? They used them a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago, right? What yeah. was it? About a month and a half ago, a month ago. So they, they, he has another two matches mm-hmm. or another match. I can't remember if he has two or one, but there's another match coming. I just don't know where. Um, does Andrew know if the Hall of Fame will be pre-taped? That's a great question. Um, I could ask. That's a very good question. I don't know. I haven't asked. I would imagine. I would imagine if you don't have an audience there, then yeah, right? How are they? How the hell are they doing the mm-hmm. Hall of Fame? Are they going to do it like in a banquet hall like they used to with just the wrestlers? That'd be cool. That'd be fun. They could, you know, like honestly, they could do it in the Thunderdome and just you know have a stage, yeah, and this and the speeches, which are fine. I always like the Hall of Fame in the full arena because uh, you see yeah. like when the wrestlers pop for each other and all that stuff. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Would you have uh, Karrion Cross destroy Finn a few times and then have Finn uh, and that unlocks the demon for Finn? Um, yeah, I, I could I could see them doing it that way, that they, they got to get the demon out of him. But maybe maybe he loses and that, that that's what brings a demon out, you know, where it took the, he took this great beating from him and mm. uh, he just didn't have enough. So now the demons back to to attempt to get his title. I wouldn't mind a cinematic match. You can do that in one match. If you have a cinematic match between Karen Cross and Finn Balor, much like that Bray Wyatt match from last year, where they're two out of three falls. On the third fall, Finn is gone. Uh, Karen Cross has to look for him. He's backstage. He's somewhere. He's somewhere dark. Yeah. Maybe the boiler room. Always Who knows a inside a cave. Always a boiler room. And then you see the demon come out, and that's the return of the demon for like a little bit. You don't need like all the pomp. I think what hurt the demon was that it killed so hard with the live crowd that they overused it. Ah, interesting. Because uh, when he was doing it on NXT and all those takeovers, it was a fun thing for the NXT fans. You know, he came out as Jack the Ripper. He came out as Leatherface, you know. Uh, I think on the main roster, it was like a little too polished and it kind of took a little bit of steam away from him, you know. It, yeah, yeah. I think it was a little too polished. You're right. Uh, is Capital is from Derek, our buddy Derek. Uh, is Capital Wrestling doing anything these days? Catalyst Wrestling now. Uh, we changed the name, but yeah, they're, we're running. We're running uh, empty arena shows. We're taping like six to eight weeks worth, and then trying it again. It's been very challenging. I'll tell you that. Very, very challenging. Here, um, I think this is from Mister Gonzo or Mister Gonzo. I'm not sure. It just says me. Uh, what's going on with last year's Hall of Fame? New class or repeat of last year? They're doing a new class, and they're going to do repeat of last year. They're doing both. Okay. So I don't uh, know if we're going to have like 16 or 20 Hall of Famers in there, but they're going to do they're, they're attempting to do some this year and, and all of last mm-hmm. year, which is going to be not that easy. We got a comment. I'm going to yeah. interject a comment from the chat room yes. from Alexander saying there is not enough fabric in Jacksonville to make a Penta outfit for Shaq. <laughs> I like that. Very uh, true. Have you I'll guys watched Young Rock from Aaron Banks? Yes, I've seen the first episode. I've my wife and I really liked it, so we've like we have them not banked in our DVR, so we're yeah. just gonna go through all of them. But I, I, it's a it's a fun show, really cute show. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's it's very polished because it's NBC. Obviously, The Rock has creative control of it. I always get a kick out of seeing who the wrestlers are that they're using. Like, I think the last episode we watched had a macho, had a macho man, a junkyard dog, uh, Andre again. I, I really like the, the Andre. On that show. No, he doesn't do that. That's, that's what I wanted. <laughs> he talks too much. He's too articulate. Uh, he has a little bit of the, uh, big stinky giant the accent, big stinky giant. I think we got one more, uh, right, question. Let's do, it. let's do it. Uh, from John Gorman. MJF turning on the inner circle was a great way to end dynamite last week. Does this lead to blood and guts? You know what? They I know that they want to do blood and guts again. 
uh, or, or do it, right? Because they never got a chance to do it. So if you have, I mean, this would be the, the, this would be it, right? They got the new horseman and they got the inner circle. Yeah. MJF turning, very good ending, to, very good ending. That was really well done. I got to tell it was, you, it was fun. So how do you feel about like the five the five horsemen now? So you have MJF, Wardlow, uh, Sean Spears, and FTR. Yeah, you got five with with Tully as their manager. Uh, how do you feel about that? What do you think they should be called? I don't know what they're going to be called. Uh, I I I think this is MJF is going to lead that whole show, right? I think it's going to be interesting to see the dynamic between MJF and the and and the revival or or FTR. Yeah. Um, I I don't know how well it's going to mesh. Okay. Because unless he puts them over, you know, like he's going to have to put them over and talk about how great these guys are and they're the greatest tag team in the world. Uh, Sean Spears still kind of gets lost in the shuffle, but I hope this is kind of like a reinvention of him. I hope so, man. Do you think that that chair shot to Cody hurt him a little bit? That should have elevated him. I I feel like they just Mm. didn't move forward with it. They didn't they didn't really move aggressively forward. It was a good reveal. I like the, uh, I kind of like a little bit of that Japanese style of booking where like everybody's in a faction. I, in AEW. I, I have to tell you, I very much like the factions. I, I do because yeah. it makes sense. It makes sense if you're getting attacked that someone's going to come out and help you. Right. I, and, and the heels yeah. are always the one in factions. The baby faces never have factions. So. That leads me to my next question, which is now your your questions have your prayers have been answered. Mox finally has a friend. Mox finally has a friend in Christian. Yeah. Uh, well, Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston and Christian. Uh, do you think we're gonna get an AW version of the Shield? Oh my God! Can you imagine they do the entrance, but in fatigues? Like, like you know what they're gonna do? Mm. The Capone and Noriega cover in Lafrak City. That's what I want to see oh, Mox, boy. <laughs> Mox and Eddie Kingston replicate. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Give me give me your War two Report. Other guys. War Report. That was the album. Okay. Give me give me your two guys that you'd want to see in AEW's version of the Shield. Oh, definitely definitely it has to be Mox and uh and, and Kingston, right? Who would be the third one? Wardlow. Wardlow needs to fulfill the Roman part. Ward, I was going to say Wardlow. Hundred, that, that, that was the name. That's the mm. only name that came to mind. <laughs> That's the I, only I, name. I would love it just to see like how how they could pull it off. Just like how dopey it would be yeah, to yeah. have this dude in a trio again. Eric in our chat says, what happened to the AEW audio in the middle of a match or two? They got completely screwed up. Yeah, it was the uh, Ethan Page oh. match. It wasn't AEW. It was, it was actually TNT screwed up in their, at their main hub. So they were sending yeah. the satellite, obviously, or, or the fiber or whatever, however they send it now, uh, to the main distribution hub, and they piped in the NBA games audio on TNT. How great was that? So they screwed up, and it took them a while to realize what the hell was going on, uh, which was really weird. It really, it, it was really messy. But it wasn't on the Fight TV app or any any of the other ones, just on the uh, mm-hmm. Turner feed. Very interesting. Yeah. That was awesome. I had, I had a lot of fun tweeting about that. That was great. It was really by fifth generation Carney says mm. uh, it was pretty sweet hearing some Marvin Gaye during the middle of that match. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, let's do one more question. Yeah, let's do it. I guess. Uh, let's see. We have Alexander asking, why is Cornette an a-hole and has he burned every bridge? No, because he's a he's a Carney and he's working everybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think that's in reference to him um, hating the calling- young bucks and Kenny Omega. Well, over the weekend, he mentioned uh, that Penelope Ford was a little loose in the caboose. If you know what I'm saying. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. And like he took to Twitter and kind of buried Miro, yeah. Kip, and Penelope Ford. I don't like him. Yeah. Uh, weird. I don't know. You know, I th- I think he he really he's such a great mind for mm. wrestling. You know, but. I feel like he's I, I feel like he thinks that his audience, this is what will build him an audience, which it has. Right. But mm-hmm. I think if he was a little bit more less of a heel, 
it would be a very different conversation about Jim Cornette. Because remember, Jim Cornette, uh, very talented. And yeah. he was doing unbelievable work on NWA. I, I think Jim Cornette mm-hmm. leaving NWA was a big hit. I understand why he had to go, right? What was the joke? It was the, it was a fry, it was the, the fried chicken joke, right? Yes, that he has said multi. I mean, a multitude of times uh, on 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 TV. I mean, over over the last three decades, he has said that joke multiple times. I don't believe he meant it in a in a racial way, but it is. It was a very insensitive comment to make. Listen, if you're in broadcast, in the time you- in the time that we're in, yeah, uh, he- listen. You don't you don't sli- it, listen. It's a standard, right? And and forget about cancel call. Forget about all that. But I would never. And we take stuff to a line on the show, right? When we do the watch along, sure. we joke about stuff. But it's never harmful in any way. But it's also not insensitive of terrible things happening. So yeah, you got to read the room. You got to read the room. If you said it in 1993, and you've said it in 19 in 2003, and he said it in 2013, maybe you should think. You know, always reevaluate yourself. That's all I'm saying. I think yeah, he yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a starve. It was a starvation joke from the 80s that you we've, we've all heard 5000 times. Listen, am I offended by it? No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. But I would also have a little bit more wherewithal to realize, like, I got to read the room. I got to realize what we're in right now. What's happening around me? What's happening in the world? Maybe that joke is not going to get over as well as it did. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, that there's a huge difference between, like, say, like a cornet saying something that he shouldn't have tried to bring back to the modern era and like yeah. somebody like Bill Burr who will just go I, off on like a, t- you know what I mean? I would say this. I would say that prior to a lot of the speak out stuff happening mm-hmm. and Cornette's NWA issue, um, they, they would have been a very good chance to see him in AEW in some capacity and even WWE in some capacity. Sure. Yeah. I think that they th- people recognize the amount of talent Jim Cornette has in wrestling. Uh, and I'm not listen. I, and I don't I don't listen to his show enough to really know what he says or dislike or like him. I just know mm. that he has this unbelievable experience and he's like a freaking encyclopedia when it comes to wrestling. Outside of that, I don't know. I don't I don't really yeah. I don't really follow his political stance. I don't I don't know what he's into. I don't I don't care to know. Really? I don't try to follow it i don't really care what anybody's political stance is to be honest yeah so, yeah uh i i i my opinion on jim Cornette is that he's very entertaining mm-hmm. and he's a great speaker but i i think he's trapped in a gimmick right now that's all you just don't like flat earthers I, you know what i want him to start flat earthing everybody <laughs> yo i'm a flat earth you <laughs> i'm gonna flat earth you come here so it's interesting uh very interesting uh, Jim said, Jim Cornette said that Tony Khan reached out to him before starting the company and they spoke and he signed a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah, I mean, listen, if anybody speaks like I have had, I, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to use them for anything, but they might have hired him as a consultant or or paid him a little bit to just get his opinion on stuff. Uh, I've had that happen with me with certain things where I signed an NDA where I cannot talk about a deal or talk about assisting in something or helping with something, but I'm not an employee. They just reached out to me. They don't want me to posts getting paid go out and start talking about what they're planning so it's a very common thing uh to do that and and it's a very common thing to go to your detractors and do that with them as well where if someone is very vocal about stuff you sometimes soften the blow and you bring them in to talk to them about stuff and kind of get their opinion and when someone feels that they're heard it kind of softens the blow a little bit and it also prevents them from talking as much so it's multiple tactics here uh i'm not saying that's what tony khan did but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's business. Yeah, just business. All right, guys, business, that's it baby. for this week. I got to get on the 1218 to Manhattan. Mm-hmm. I'm going to work today. So we'll be back on Thursday with another episode of Matt Men, a regular mm-hmm. time, 11 p.m. Thursday here on the East Coast, live on YouTube, youtube.com slash Matt Men Podcast. You can go there. Guys, hit the subscribe button while you're here. If you haven't already, go to your favorite podcasting app. Doesn't matter what it is. Look up Matt Men Podcast and subscribe. Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, Pandora we're on. Uh, Amazon we're on. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, check us out there. For all things rich and, of course, Behind the Counter 2.0 is back. One of my favorite comic book podcasts. Rich interviews an artist or, or somebody from the comic book, po- comic book world each and every week. 
releases them live on Saturdays. What else can you tell us, Rich? Uh, it's at BTC Rich X on YouTube. And as always, you can follow me at uh, BTC Rich on Twitter, which is mainly what I use to post my nonsense. So Mr. Gonzo could start posting those also on GFQ. Uh, yeah, I got to send him the files. Yeah, and Suncast needs to set him up too. So we'll do that. Oh. Uh, and that's it, guys. You can follow me at Andrew Zarian, at Andrew Zarian on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere you, you could imagine. TikTok is Mattman Pro Wrestling. TikTok. Uh, what else? Twitter, Mattman Pro- Matt Podcast on Twitter and everywhere else. Just look up Mattman. We'll see you all next time, guys. Take care.